advance the second round of the State 4A basketball playoffs on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel tonight. We're in Millville at Ridgeline, where the Ridgeline Riverhawks will take on the Uinta Utes out of the Uinta Basin, out of Vernal are the Utes. Ridgeline, the seventh seed with their RPI ranking, taking on the number 10 seed, Uinta Utes. Uinta was third in Region 10. Ridgeline number one, and they were number one outright with that win over Logan last week. Pretty good season for the Ridgeline River Hawks. Caden Cox, he can bomb away from outside. He's the guy that scores 16 plus a game, but they've got guys everywhere that do a little bit of everything. It's one of those synergy types of things, right? Where they're all together, they're better than they are individually. And they're going against the three guard lineup and a Ute team tonight. It could be a spoiler type of team. You gotta watch out. We'll find out what happens. Coming up next on the Game of the Week Playoff Edition. I have been up and down with my weight for my whole life. I've always wanted a body that looks like something very specific in my mind. Even when I was at my best, I never got there. Today we're hitting the fusion. Over the last three months, I've lost 33 and a half pounds of fat working out on the Fusion CST. I can do a 30 minute workout and I have done cardio, strength, sweat my ass off and I'm done for the day. I'm your iFit trainer, let's work. It honestly felt like somebody was in the room encouraging me to push harder. We're going in three, two, one, let's go. It felt like this person's attention is literally on me right now. Who wants those abs? Who wants the And I'm going to them? push myself to not let them down. We're hitting everything right I here. I never thought I would have abs. I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, there's a couple of abs. Nice work. I always had a vision of what I wanted my body to look like. I've achieved that now. And that makes me feel incredibly proud. Thanks to Nordic Track. Wendy's is saying thanks for making the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger America's number one bacon cheeseburger by giving you more of what you love. Introducing Wendy's Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Double the beef, double the bacon, and now it comes in a giant meal for $5 with nuggets, fries, and a drink. There's absolutely nothing Junior about it except the price. Get Wendy's $5 Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger meal before it's gone. Here at Palmer's we've always had a, a philosophy of keeping our prices the lowest in town. That's kind of our guarantee. We always guarantee the lowest prices in the valley. We were in a warehouse for 17 years and we could justify it by the low overhead. Nothing's changed with our move. We have a little bigger store because we outgrew the last one. but. Uh, nobody will beat us in price on any product, on mattresses, furniture, sofas, you name it, we'll beat it. We're on the highway in Providence, three blocks south of Macy's, right next to Big O Tire. Day of the Ridgeline River Hawks a little bit earlier this week. Talked to him about a bunch of things about this game coming up, about the game last week against Logan. That was a pretty good ball game. He said, yeah, 
that was a good tune-up, crazy environment. He said, I don't think we're going to see an environment like that the rest of the way in the playoffs. And I, I asked him about Uena. He said, well, they're really powered by three guards. They run a lot of the sets for those guards to get them shots, and they can knock down those shots, and they can score in bunches. We need to make sure we're careful. I asked him about the postseason and how it changed, and he said, well, it changes everything. You kind of shift gears, and you go from that every other day mentality or every couple of days mentality to where we got to win or we go home mentality. They had a good week of practice, high intensity early, kind of working their way toward a little bit less intensity and more on the chalkboard, right, to save their legs. They need to keep you in out of transition. They need to know where those three guards are, try to take advantage of what their size is and take what's given. Those were the keys he gave me for a win tonight and to move on in the playoffs, the quarterfinals down in, uh, well, it's in Richfield. We'll find out how that works out for the Riverhawks coming up next on the Game of the Week. Say the word base. Say the word mess. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. Rich's Cars and Credit, good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. Welcome to the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel tonight at Richline High School in Millville, where Richline will take on the UNA Utes at Region 10 in the second round of the State 4A basketball playoffs. Got the choir out there for the National Anthem. So we're going to step aside and let them sing for us. Tonight's nice rendition of the National Anthem. Ridgeline is the seventh seed. They're out of Region 11, 14 and 8, 9 and 1 in region play. The top team winning the region title. In Region 11, you win a, the tenth seed. 12 and 7 on the season, 7 and 5 and third in league play. You win averages 50 points a game, gives up 51. Ridgeline scores 60, gives up 51. Ridgeline's numbers, they're number one in Region 11 in scoring, number five in 4A. Josh Spears, 6'2", junior, averages 15 points per game for Uinta. Cayman Anderson, a six-foot senior, averaging 12 points per game, is number 11. Daniel Wright, the six-foot senior, eight points, three rebounds, two assists for number 12. Morgan Mansfield, number 23, the 6'2", senior, six points a game. And Trey Briggs, the 
a six foot senior. A couple of points, a couple of rebounds a game. Brandon Johnson, the head coach. And now they're going to introduce the home standing Rich Lion River Hawks. Ridge Lions got some size, they got some ball handlers, they got some defense, they've got a sniper. Caden Cox is the aforementioned sniper. The quarterback for the football team broke his leg against Skyview in the playoffs, back within six weeks. He's just a junior. Peyton Knowles, the 6'5", junior averages 11 points, four rebounds, and two assists per game. Josh Jackman, 6'9", in the middle. He's a junior. Six, foot, six points, four rebounds per game. Chase Hall, a senior, 6'1", nine points, four rebounds and three assists. Well, Spencer Adams gonna get introduced first. He's the other senior on this team. They only have two. Spencer Adams also 6'1", averaging 8'4 four, and 4. And here's Chase Hall, finally. Final home game of the season for Ridgeline. The winner of this game will continue on. And they'll get the winner of the Dixie Bear River game that's going on right now as well. All the games from this point on will be played down at the Sevier Valley Center in Ridgefield. They used to do uh, SUU one year and then Weber another year, and I think this was Weber's year, but from what I understand, the Severe Center is really the only place they could get this year with all the COVID and everything. They had to, they had to make some changes about where it was going to be. So Mansfield and Knowles will jump it up. Knowles wins the tap, and Jackman hands to Adams, and we're underway in the second round of the State 4A basketball playoffs. Eric Olson along with you against a Ridgeline team that's a seven seed, but ranked in the District News as number three in the state. And they get on the board early. As Knowles works his way across the lane, gets the back pick. Hall delivers it where it needs to be and he turns and scores easily. Here's Spears. Averaging 15 and a half per game. Goes to his left, gets in the tall timber and puts it in the bucket. Knowles handles, gives it off to Hall. He looks down low to Knowles again. He had him if he wanted him. Didn't go that way. Now they go Knowles in the short corner. Cross court pass on the angle to Adams. Hall looks in and they're fronting Jackman. Now they lob it in over top. Jackman goes up, blocked, but he gets it back and scores. And now a turnover on the inbounds pass for Uena. First turnover of the ball game and Ridgeline with a 4-2 lead gets the ball back underneath their own hoop. Hall finds Cox, Cox down inside, contact and one. Morgan Mansfield, the 6'2 senior, picks up the foul. First of the game for either team. And Cox will go to the free throw line, averaging about 16 and a half points per game. He's 10th in 4A in scoring. Spears is 11th for Uinta. Cox with the three-point play. It's 7-2, Ridgeline with the early lead. Wright gives it off to Anderson. He can fire away and hit from long range, and he does right there. But Kamen Anderson makes it a two-point ball game, 7-5 Ridgeline. Cox looks in to Knowles. Nice entry pass. Knowles from the low block puts it up and in. Coach Kyle Day told me before the game, he said, I'm hoping we can use our size. We're going to have a little bit of size on it. And that's what they've done early. They're going down low to Knowles and Jackman, and they're trying to attack the rim. Defense! 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 Mansfeld looks for some help. He's got Spears. Cox guarding him. Spears with the right hand dribble this time. 
I think Adams got a piece of it, and then Knowles touches it before it goes out of bounds. And it'll stay on this end. You win a trailing by four, 9-5, with 5.54 to play in the first quarter with Trigger in. Anderson out front to right. Right works on Adams straight away. Right spins inside. Ball knocked away. He gets it back, turns and scores. Both teams shooting the ball well in the early going. It's basically a three-guard lineup for Uinta. Adams uses the screen for Jackman, leaves it off for Knowles. He's going to go to the line after finishing. Knowles has six, and he's going to go to the line for a chance for one more. Knowles at 6'5", just a junior, makes the free throw. And when you look at Uinta, they go 6'2", 6'0", 6'4", excuse me. Yeah, 6'4". Spears loses it, gets on it, slides across the floor, and they call a travel. Second turnover for Uinta. Ridgeline has yet to cough it up. Coach Johnson kind of asking the refs about that, saying, hey, how'd my guy end up falling on the floor? Five-point Ridgeline lead. Matches their largest of the game. Down low, all alone is Knowles. He knows what to do with it. Knowles has nine points here in this first quarter. We've only played two minutes and 59 seconds. He's got nine of his team's 14. And Ridgeline out to their largest lead of this young ball game. And now a foul as Hall puts a body into right. First foul on Ridgeline. Anderson uses the screen, goes baseline. Right was open, he didn't take it. Now he bounces it down, and Anderson in the corner for three. High arching shot won't go. Rebounded by Adams. Adams in a hurry across the timeline. Kicks it in the corner to Hall. He's going to lob it into Knowles, and they're going to say that Knowles pushed off. And a foul and a turnover for Ridgeline in one play. Knowles picks up the first foul of the game for Ridgeline, and Ridgeline's going to throw some pressure. And now they back out of it. Anderson will bring it across the timeline. Cox waits for him. Neither team has gone to their bench yet. Down low, Spears way under the basket, and he turns it over. Out to Adams. Adams races downfield, throws it at the rim, and they say, no, on the floor. And a foul called on right. Foul on Uinta, Richland basketball. This Uinta team only won four games last year. And here's the turnover on the inbounds play. Spears got up there and got a hand on it. Hall tried to pass it in, and he took it away from him. Spears lost it, got it back, gets it off to Mansfield. Mansfield in the far corner, short shot, rebounded by Adams, quickly out to Cox. Cox trots across the timeline. He's got... Hall in the corner, but Jackman's going to fire up a three. Got it. Jackman's got five. And it's a ten-point lead now for Ridgeline at 17-7. Three and a half to play in the first quarter. As Uin has gone cold from the field. Right. Across the lane, back out front to Anderson. Anderson, long three on the way. Got it. Heyman Anderson with six points on a pair of triples. And it's a 17-10 ball game as we approach the three-minute mark of this first quarter. Ridgeline leading Uinta in the second round of the state 4A basketball playoffs. 
Angled jumper from Jackman rims out. Maxfield re rebounds it. Mansfield, excuse me, rebounds it. This one knocked away from Wright. He gets it back. Scoop and score. He'll go to the line. Cox picks up the foul. That's his first third team foul. Jake Smith will replace Chase Hall. Smith averages five points a game, a 6'2 junior. Hall and Adams, the only seniors on this Ridgeline team. And Wright with a chance to make it a four point ball game. And he does, it's 17-14, 17-13, pardon me. Ridgeline with the lead. Brett Christofferson into the ball game for Uinta, number one. Adams gonna hold. They run the log. Perfectly to Knowles, and he throws down. Knowles with 11. Mansfield, jumper short. Knowles with the rebound. Here we go the other way. Adams in a hurry. Adams has a screen. He uses it. Now he backs it out. Kicks it out to Cox. On the move. Three ball. Won't go. Rebound. Adams. Makes me tired just watching him. Adams kicks it back out to Knowles, who's having a huge ball game so far. 11 points in this first quarter. A 19-13 lead for Ridgeline. Adams scoops up the shot, and they're going to say it was on the ground on the drive. And a foul. Can we call on Anderson? Booth into the ball game for Ridgeline. And McCourt pickup into the ball game for Uinna. There they go to Cox. He hits and spears with the foul. They've run that inbounds play twice. They've scored both times. And spears picks up his first foul. Right back in, and Anderson's going to have to sit down. Hall comes back on for Ridgeline, and Adams will sit. Five team fouls now for Uena as Cox makes the free throw. Ridgeline's three for three from the free throw line tonight. Uena one for one. A minute and a half left in the first quarter, a 22-13 lead. It was a 10-point lead for Ridgeline a few minutes ago. Uena whittled it down to four, and now Ridgeline... Back out front. Hall reaches in, knocks it away, and Ridgeline comes up with it. Straight away, long three, got it. Caden Cox. Nine points. He's watching Knowles saying, I want in on this. And it's a 12-point lead for Ridgeline. Wright falls down. From the seat of his pants, he gets that one out to Christofferson. Spears has been quiet. They've kept the ball out of his hands. Steps back, goes down low to pick up. Pick up loses it and grabs it. Out front, Christofferson to Spears. Spears, oh, good move, but he kind of lost control. He had Smith on skates for a minute. Spears loses it out of bounds. Pass was a little behind him, and he went to reach for it. Couldn't get it cleanly, and out of bounds it went. That's the fourth turnover for Uinta. 25-13 Ridgeline with the 12-point lead and the ball. 30 seconds to play in the first quarter here in Millville. Smith hands back to Cox. Now Booth looks down to Knowles. They double Knowles and take it away from him. Fourth turnover now for Ridgeline and Spears out front. Christofferson goes to the middle, then kicks it to right. Pick up, sets the screen. And now Spears, less than a second left. He doesn't get the shot off. He made the shot, but it was after the buzzer. 25-13, Richline leads at the end of one. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel.
they would tell me something and I'd say, huh? And then they'd tell me again and I'd say, huh? And they'd say, never mind. And so I called and made an appointment. Say the word pass. He's a PhD and I know what it takes to get a PhD. Say the word red. It was like night and day. And then the hearing test was the, the thing that I thought, wow, he, he really knows what he's doing. I would recommend Dr. Danes to anybody, everybody. Here at Palmer's we've always had a, a philosophy of keeping our prices the lowest in town. That's kind of our guarantee. We always guarantee the lowest prices in the valley. We were in a warehouse for 17 years and we could justify it by the low overhead. Nothing's changed with our move. We have a little bigger store because we outgrew the last one, but uh, nobody will beat us in price on any product. On mattresses, furniture, sofas, you name it, we'll beat it. We're on the highway in Providence, three blocks south of Macy's, right next to Big O' Tire. Back at Ridgeline, Eric Olson along with you on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. 25-13 Ridgeline with the big first quarter. It was back and forth early and then you went to missed a few shots and Ridgeline just kept on steaming. Caden Cox, nine points in the quarter. Peyton Knowles with 11. Josh Jackman had five. And those were the scores for Ridgeline. Two for Spears, six for Anderson, five for Wright. Four turnovers for Uinta, four turnovers for Ridgeline. Uinta with five team fouls, three for the Riverhawks. And Uinta will get the ball to start the second quarter, trailing by 12. They trailed 17-7 and then cut that lead down to 17-13. And then they haven't scored since. Pickup, spins in, it was a nice move, but Knowles kept his feet Blocked it away, and at the other end, Jake Smith makes him pay. Two points for Smith, and it's a 14-point ball game, and a near turnover on the inbounds play. Ridgeline with the pressure. Ridgeline very aggressive here in the early going. Now we've seen them use pressure before, but this was an aggressive press thrown on early. Spears. Puts it up and in. Spears makes it 27-15, Ridgeline. Cox to Smith, fires for three, misses, rebounded by Christofferson. Here we go the other way. And he slows it down. Ridgeline leading by a dozen. Uena trying to get a little run of their own going and get a little control back as this ball game before they get to the half. They call that on Booth. The way Booth is acting, I think that was on him. <laughs> Easton Taylor into the ball game. Christofferson and Wright sit down. Anderson's back in as well. Anderson's hit a couple of threes. And Taylor with the ball now, working against Caden Cox. Knowles is going to guard Anderson. Spears looking for an opening, fires and hits. Josh Spears, a 6'2 junior, he's silky smooth. He makes it a 10 point ball game. A 27-17. They double Hall. He goes to Smith and then Pickup runs into him. And Pickup pick up, picks up the foul. That's a 16 foul, so with six minutes to play in the half, Ridgeline will be shooting free throws every whistle from here on out. Booth. Looking at a three, won't go. Rebounded by Anderson, he blocked out Smith. 
let the ball hit the ground before he even had to pick it up. He leans left, goes back right, high off the glass, up and in. Anderson with eight. And it's an eight point Rich Line lead. Cox, long three, got it. Cox with a dozen, and it's 30 to 19. Ridgeline back out front. Chase Hall knocked it away momentarily from Easton Taylor. Taylor spun right into Hall. Hall timed it just right. Ran past, got a hand on it, and then it went out of bounds off of Ridgeline. Pick up the sit. Jackman back in for Ridgeline. McClellan in the ball game is. Taylor spins out of trouble, and now it's Anderson with it. Anderson with, to the left, back to the right. And now Spears has it. Adams will check him. He stays in front of Spears, and he has to give it up. Mansfield gives it off to McClellan, and McClellan's foul on the way in. Knowles just picked up his second foul. And they didn't like the call here in Millville. Now Kyle Day has a decision to make. Does he keep Knowles on the court with his two fouls and 444 to play in the first half? Or does he let him stay out there? McClellan hits the free throw. Pulls you in a back to within 10 with one more to go. Hits them both. He went as out, scored Ridgeline 8 5 here in the quarter as Cox is short from the right corner. Lane opens up and running down it is McClellan. No, that was that was not McClellan. That was Taylor. He got past Cox and ran right down the middle of the lane, like Main Street at 2 a.m. And he puts it in, and it's 30 to 23. Here's a little run from Uena. We wondered Do they have a run in them here in this first half to get the score more manageable before the half. And they've outscored Ridgeline 10-5. Here in this second quarter, Kyle Day having a chat with his team as Brandon Johnson's talking to the Utes down below us as well. Ridgeline are winners of seven straight. They've won 10 of their last 11. They're only lost at 59-57 in overtime to Skyview in that span. And they won those games by an average of 20 points per ball game. So they're on a roll. It looks a lot like last year. You know, they last year they got to the quarterfinals where Juan Diego beat them by five and snapped an eight-game winning streak. For Ridgeline, and they're on a seven game win streak right now. And I ought to mention the Ridgeline girls won earlier 52 43. Crazy enough, they also drew Uinta in their, in their pairings. They play Cedar Valley Skyview winner. So as Hall fires up a three, too long, and Anderson throws the baseball pass to Spears. Spears misses. I wonder if he knew Knowles was coming up his back, but Knowles had to back off because he's got those two fouls. Ah, you won't see that much, I'm sure. Here's Knowles down low, and one. Assist, Chase Hall, to Pat Knowles for the layup. Basket made. Going to the line. And Knowles now with 13. Misses. That's the first miss in the free throw line by either team. 
Long three on the way by Anderson. He puts it in. Anderson's got three threes. And he's got 11 points to lead the Utes. Knowles to Cox. Cox had a look at three, and he backs it out. It's a six-point ball game. Ridgeline's led this thing by as many as 13. 14. Check that. And now it's down to a six-point game. As we approach the three-minute mark, a little bit more life now in Uinna. Anderson reaches from the backside and knocks it away and says, no, hey, it's ours. And he smiled when they said, no, it stays here. He knew it wasn't theirs. McClellan takes a seat. Down low. There's Knowles, and he knows what to do with it when he's that close to the bucket. Assist Chase Hall. His second dunk of the night. He got one on a backdoor lob, and then that one on that play. The inbounds play under the basket's been money for Ridgeline. Back out to an eight-point lead. Looking for a foul was right. He puts it up there, and no love. And it leads to a three-point wide-open attempt in the corner for Hall. Hall hits the three, and he turns around to the you in a bench behind him and shows him three shows him three fingers. I'm sure they were talking to him as he was putting the shot up. And you in a bench, I all laughed. Back out to an 11-point lead, just like that for Ridgeline. As we approach the two-minute mark of this half. Down the lane, shut off is Taylor. Anderson back with it. Mansfield. Back out to Taylor. Rich line not giving you in a look, but you in a being patient. Now coming around the corner is right. Hall takes it away from him. Jump ball. And the possession arrow favors Rich line. That's a turnover for Uinna, their fifth of the night. Both teams with five turnovers here in this first half. Richline with an 11-point lead. A minute and a half left in the first half. Smith had a look for a second. Jackman down low to Knowles and Knowles. Mansfield puts a saddle on him. And Mansfield made sure that Knowles didn't hit the deck, and Knowles did the same for Mansfield. Shooting two. And Knowles will shoot two. Knowles with 15 first half points, make it 16. Trey Briggs back on the floor for Uinta, and Mansfield has to sit. He's got two fouls. Knowles, second one, skips off the rim. And it's a 12-point Ridgeline lead. 120 to play in the half. Both teams making runs. Here's the lob into Spears. The help comes backside. Spears in a triple team situation. And he has to get rid of it. Timeout, Uinta, Brandon Johnson. Runs to midcourt and called the timeout. Uinta had kind of got into a little bit of a scramble. And he saw it. Said, let's uh, start this thing over again. Uinta, the number three team out of Region 10, the 10th seed, according to RPI, out of Vernal. They had a first round bye, and they're winners of five of their last seven games. That loss, well those two losses to number one Juan Diego and to Stansberry. Josh Spears is number 11 right behind Caden Cox in 4A in scoring. He's fourth in steals. Cayman Anderson is fourth in 4A in three pointers and second in assists in 4A. As a team you win is averaging just under seven threes per game. Seven made threes a game. 12 assists and six steals. And tonight, 
Ewan has made three three-pointers. Richline also with three from the parking lot. Christofferson's back in the game. They're trying to double him and trap him. He runs away from it. Anderson to Christofferson. Now to Taylor. Briggs climbs up the chest of Knowles and he leaves it short. Knowles had to just stand there with his hands straight up with those two fouls and with 40 seconds to play, Ridgeline sitting on a 38-26 lead. Looks like they might run a little clock. Let's see. Well, Hall's going to attack. Lob it up. Throw it down. Two more for Ridgeline and Peyton Knowles. He's got seven in the quarter, 18 for the game. And Cox taps this one out of bounds, and it's back to a 14-point Ridgeline lead. You win it. Knocked a 14-point lead down to six, and now Ridgeline's made their own run. Here's Anderson. He's hit three three-pointers here in this first half. He holds against Caden Cox. Ten on the clock. He's got himself a screen. He steps back. He's straddling the three-point line. Misses. Knowles fights for the rebound. We're going the other way. As Briggs jumped in there, and they say he fouled Knowles. That's a one-and-one -one situation. Knowles with a chance to get to 20 before halftime. It's been fun to watch Knowles' progression as a basketball player. I mean, you can see him getting better every game. He's a great athlete. How could he not be? I mean, his dad, Marty, was just a superior athlete. And his, his mom, Melania, the same thing. She was a great volleyball player. So the genes are all there. As Knowles hits the first free throw. He's got 19. But he's just come along and he's... He's, he's the guy I don't think people talk enough about in this team and they're gonna set him down with four seconds left. Make sure he doesn't get a cheap foul. With a 42-26 lead, out of bounds as Will Booth gets a hand on it. I heard that clear up here. 3.6 now as you win a trying to get a shot before the half. They trail by 16. Christofferson fires it up at the buzzer and it's short. Richline takes a 42-26 lead into the locker room. Over you in you're watching the Game of the Week Playoff Edition on the Valley Channel. Here at Palmer's, we've always had a, a philosophy of keeping our prices the lowest in town. That's kind of our guarantee. We always guarantee the lowest prices in the valley. We were in a warehouse for 17 years and we could justify it by the low overhead. Nothing's changed with our move. We have a little bigger store because we outgrew the last one, but uh, nobody will beat us in price on any product, on mattresses, furniture, sofas, you name it, we'll beat it. Hey, this is the Denali sectional made by Jackson Furniture. Okay, American made, steel frame, coils in the seat cushions, lifetime warranty, 100% genuine top grain Italian leather. Um, one of the most popular sets, completely modular. Uh, the sectional can be made any size you want, whether you want big or small, with a chase, uh, however you want. You name it, it can be built to whatever dimension you want. Uh, the quality of this product is, is the best that we have. Um, in fact, it's the one I have in my house. Uh, really, really nice set um, that is on a great deal right now. You gotta come check this one out. We're on the highway in Providence, three blocks south of Macy's, right next to Big O Tire.
Why are we starting to lose our hearing? Is it genetic? Is it environmental? What, what's happening to us? There's many things. Genetics can take a part of it. Um, certain medications, ototoxic drugs, uh, but most of it's just life, living, living in general. We go to a concert here, we go to a, a motorcycle rally, we ride a motorcycle, we're exposed to all these loud sounds, loud music, but it all takes a little bit of hearing, a little bit here, a little bit there, we don't notice it, it's so slowly happening and it's painless and over time just that little bit compounds and pretty soon we have a significant hearing loss that's affecting our ability to communicate with our loved ones. If you are experiencing any kind of problem, be you my age or be you younger, why don't you give Dr. Danes a call here at Cache Valley Hearing. Tell us where we are, Dr. Danes, and how they can get hold of you. We're at 485 North Main Street in Logan, uh, and you can just give us a call at 435-753-4327 or at 753-HEAR here. That's a good, <laughs> that's very apt. Yeah, I should say so. Uh, any kind of hearing loss, and literally, please don't let this um, feeling of embarrassment or it not being manly or cool, that's, you know, that's a bit dim. Y you shouldn't be embarrassed about something that is a natural aging process. It's right? actually more noticeable when you don't hear and have to that's have people to repeat themselves. That's true, and extremely irritating for those around you that are having to repeat it time and time again. Thanks so much, Dr. Danes. And seriously, guys, give Dr. Danes a call. Your hearing problems will be solved. Thanks, Dr. Danes. You just love your customers and your customers obviously love you. A lot of places have closed down during the last few months but you've kept going and at the moment you're celebrating all that customer loyalty with this fabulous um, free nacho deal when somebody orders a large pizza. Yeah, you know we happy and lucky we've been open this whole time yeah. and it's no, it's slow down the business a little bit but some days we're really busy. And I understand it's hard to make everybody happy, but we've done the best we can, and we try to prevent anything we can to get safe. Yeah. And so far, we've been doing good, and I hopefully we keep it going yeah. this way, and we just gotta pray to make it happen and just yeah. keep doing the best we can to be safe and enjoy our lives. Absolutely. And one of the things that sadly has happened during this whole performance of the virus and everything is that a lot of businesses have been closing early. So you come downtown seven or eight o'clock sometimes and you can't find anything open except for maybe you guys because you're open way late. You know what, we don't change any of the hours. We don't get rid of any of the employees. We try to keep everybody because this is the hardest times. We need it. We need the help, and hopefully we're doing something good for them. And people want to eat even after eight or nine o'clock. We still the same hours every day, all day long. So we're here for them, and they've been here for us. So no changes. Hopefully we keep doing what we're doing. I think so. I mean, it's not my age particularly, because I'm usually in bed by then. But <laughs> the younger kids, certainly students, they want to eat at, at 10 and 11 o'clock at night. And this is about the only place that you can probably come and get a fabulous nacho dish, pizzas, you've got sandwiches, desserts. It's just a great place, and you are open. You know, and we've been noticed, you know, after 9 o'clock, we have one more rash and it go for a while yeah. because everybody's closed down and we've been here and we've been happy to do it. Yeah. You know, it's no question. We enjoy what we do and uh, we appreciate it yeah. because it's hard to get those loyalty customers being supporting us it to is. us. It so is. we're going to do anything to make them happy 
and uh, hopefully we go a long ways with them. Oh, you, you always do. Tell us where we are and how people can find you. Uh, we're still located in 119 South Main in the basement, and we'll be here for a while to when people supporting us. Yeah. So you need anything sort of, well, any time during the day from 11 o'clock onwards, right? Up until 10, 11, even midnight on a weekend. Come on down to the factory, see Fernando and the guys here. You are bound to find a really good meal. Thanks so much, Fernando. Thank you, and I appreciate all the Cash Valley followers, and uh, we hopefully we'll be here for a long time. You will. Thank you. Water is always described as being tranquil. Then you dive in and you're just moving through it and you're ripping through it and it's not tranquil at all. All I want to do in my life is to be a United States Navy fighter pilot. I can just see myself whizzing through the air, fly high and fly fast. That's what I want to do. She really feels the call to serve our country and she is gonna do it regardless of what that requires of her. Nothing motivates me more than when someone tells me that I can't do something. Becoming a fighter pilot is something people might not expect a woman to do, but she does it anyway and she doesn't care. I feel like I gotta stick it to him. I gotta prove him wrong. That really makes her a role model for other girls. That's another stereotype broken by Wells Johnson. <laughs> Wells is the person that has the most grit, the most determination, the one that won't give up, that is very relentless. It's like Teddy Roosevelt said, nothing in this world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. Everything that I do with school and the sport, it's all been working towards this one thing. It's how I can use my gifts and talents to serve the world. I know that this is God's path for me. The sky is kind of like water, where it's tranquil and peaceful. And then up in a plane, you're tearing through the sky. I can just picture myself flying. I can see that so vividly. <laughs> Your password is password, and everything you own is gray, Mike. I thought you liked basic, Mike. That was before I had Wendy's made to crave chicken sandwiches. Now I know I can do better than basic. Upgrade from basic with three new sandwiches on Wendy's made to crave menu. The barbecue chicken sandwich, avocado BLT chicken sandwich, and the sauce and bacon chicken sandwich. At Wendy's, we got you. I need to take a long drive at exactly the speed limit. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, of mine. Rich's Cars and Credit, good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. Back at Ridgeline High School, Eric Olson along with you as we get set to start the second half. Ridgeline leads Uinta 42 to 26. Ridgeline had opened up a 14 point lead at one point. And then Uinta came storming back. They cut that lead to six. And Ridgeline went on a little run of their own to push it back out to where it is now, 42. 26. Uena was led by Cayman Anderson. He had three three-pointers and 11 points in the first half. Six for Josh Spears. 
Five for Daniel Wright and two apiece for Easton Taylor and McRae McClellan off the bench. But for Ridgeline, and the story was Peyton Knowles. Peyton Knowles with 20 points in that first half. And he did a, he had a six, eight, nine, 11 in the first quarter, nine in the second quarter. Math is hard. And then 12 for Caden Cox there in that first half as well. He only scored three in the second quarter. It was all Knowles in that second quarter for Ridgeline. Three points for Chase Hall, five points for Josh Jackman, and a bucket for Jake Smith off the bench. So Ridgeline controlling the action. And you win a, trying to stay with them, but they don't have an answer for Knowles. One other score we've got from the region, Logan trails Snow Canyon at the half, 31 to 16. Logan the nine seed, Snow Canyon the eight seed. So Logan's down in St. George playing Snow Canyon. Skyview's hosting Stansbury. Haven't seen a score out of that one. Green Canyon's at Cedar City. Bear River's at Dixie. And in the other playoff games, Tooele's at Crimson Cliffs. Pineview's at Juan Diego. And Cedar Valley at Desert Hills. And ready to start this second half. Another big thing with for Ridgeline and Knowles, he got two fouls relatively early in that first half, and then he stayed foul for free the rest of the way. They didn't take him out. He had a couple of plays where he just kind of had to back out. They went after him trying to get that third foul. He, he had to back out or just back off or just stand with his hands straight up, and he was able to play the rest of the half without picking up that third foul. And here's Spears who's been quiet. He averages 15 a game. They've really tried to keep the ball out of his hands. Rich line and a switching man. Here's Anderson, finds Spears. They just kind of play catch with it out front. Right comes to Anderson, and Anderson keeps it. Anderson to the left, lays it up, misses off the front of the iron. Jackman clears to Cox. Corner, Hall, wide open, got it. Three-point basket, Chase Hall, Caden Cox with the assist. Now it's a 19-point ball game, 45-26. Danger time for the Utes. Wright gets inside, Jackman's there, so he kicks it back out. 16-footer won't go for Briggs. It's too hard, and Knowles with the rebound. Adams played and didn't score in that first half, but he did other things. Adams averages eight points, four rebounds, and four assists. Looking for Knowles on the back cut. They've got him down on the low block. Kicks it with a no-look pass. Hall in the corner, too hard. Jackman knocks the rebound out of bounds. You in a ball. Use basketball. And Anderson will trigger inbounds. And here's that pressure from Ridgeline. Wright's going to bring it up as Ridgeline backs out. Ridgeline leading by 19. Cox knocks it away from Wright. Wright picks it back up. He's just been a pest all night, has Cox, no matter who he's been on. And now Wright gets past Cox, and they're going to call Caden Cox for the bump with the arm. Cox with his second foul. Five fouls on Ridgeline in the first half. Eight on Uena, right, for jumper, won't go. Rebounded by Knowles. Here's Cox. Hall to Adams, lob inside to Knowles. He leans in, he scores. Spencer Adams will be to Peyton Knowles with the layup. That's 
exactly what Kyle Day was hoping they could do. They have the size advantage. He didn't think that Uinta had anybody that could that could check Peyton Knowles, and Knowles has proven him right. 22 for Knowles, and there's a travel for Mansfield. Sixth turnover for Uinta. Uinta's taking care of the ball pretty well, as has Ridgeline. Six turnovers for Uinta, five for Ridgeline. Ridgeline's had that inside game going. They've hit four three-pointers on the night as Ridgeline. They average about six and a half made threes per game. Cox tries to hand it back to Knowles and he traveled and he knows it. Sixth turnover now for Ridgeline. They lead by 21. They just kind of quietly just kept extending this lead. It was a six-point game at one point and in the second quarter, and Ridgeline's just blown it open. Now they lead by 21. Wright gets inside, misses. Anderson's there to pick up the loose ball. Spears lay it up and one as Adams was trailing, and he reached in and fouled him. Spears with eight now, and he'll go to the free throw line. You went on wanting to get him going. You got to be able to have the ball to get going. And then you got to be able to have a shot. Ridgeline's done a good job defending him. Spears with the free throw, he's got nine. And it's a 47 29 Ridgeline lead. Four and a half to play in the third quarter. Cox leaves it off for Jackman. He loses it. Gets it back, though. Puts it up off the glass. He'll go to the free throw line. Not happy that he missed it. 6'9", Junior. He's another player that's coming along for Coach Day. He said, you know, he's been really good in region play. And he gives us a, he gives us a little something extra depending on matchups. He misses the free throw here. You know, he was really valuable in the matchup against Skyview, as big as Skyview is. Skyview can go, can go real big down low. So they needed him as he hits the second. He played well against the Bobcats. Here's that pressure by Ridgeline right in trouble, splits the double. Behind the back, nice handles. Timeout, UNL. Brandon Johnson wants a timeout. Timeout, timeout, UNL. UNL coach, and he's talking to Wright. He saw something he didn't like that was going on there. Called a timeout, brings his team to the sideline. Trailing 48 29 with 418 to play in this third quarter. UN is coming off a Region 10 win. They didn't play Tuesday. They, they got a bye the first week as well, and so they haven't played since last Friday. Their final Region 10 game was a win over Tooele, 64-61, two overtimes that ball game. Spears had 28. His career high is 29 versus Duchesne last December. Anderson had 14, right, 13 in that one, and again, they only won four games last year, so a turnaround for Uena. They go 12 and 7 this year. They're the number three team in their in their region, and they're in the 10-7 game here to to start the playoffs. Big turnaround for the Utes. Right into the backcourt has to go chase it down. As big as that turnaround's been for you in a, they're in dire straits against Ridgeline. Here's the miss as Knowles was there to contest. But Uena finally tracks down the loose ball. Long three straight away. Anderson. Payment Anderson has 14. Hall. 
to Knowles. Knowles can shoot the three, but he doesn't. Up down to Hall. Hall back to Knowles, who steps back from about 17, and he air balls it. Anderson grabs it before it goes out of bounds. 16-point lead for Ridgeline, 3.20 to play in the third quarter. You're going to try to make a push and get this down to single digits before the fourth quarter begins. Spears pulls up from three. Too hard off the back of the iron. Right gets the rebound, puts up a three of his own. Now you win a heating up, 48-35. Ridgeline still in control, but the gap is narrowing. Not for long. As Caden Cox rains one down of his own. He's got 15. And it's a 51-35 lead, back up to 16 for Ridgeline. It's 21, and then down to 13. Now it's back up to 16. And a 30-second timeout down on the floor. I mentioned earlier the Ridgeline girls won. They beat Uinta. That's kind of a strange draw that both teams got Uinta on that RPI. The Ridgeline girls won 52-43. They're the three seed. Cedar Valley and Skyview are playing the girls. Skyview is the sixth seed. Cedar Valley is the 11th seed. Ridgeline plays the winner, the girls do, of that game. So it could be Ridgeline against Skyview in the girls' quarterfinal. Winner of this game right here gets the Dixie Bear River winner on Monday down at the Sevier Valley Center in Richfield. Off I-70. Right, pulls up, looks down low to pick up. It's loose. Ridgeline comes up with it. Cox to the rim, right. Fouls and makes sure he doesn't score. Cox, Cox will have to go earn the points. Cayman Anderson leads Uinta with 14. Peyton Knowles with 22 for Ridgeline Cox with 16 now for the Riverhawks. McCray McClellan will replace pickup. And Booth will replace Jackman. Cox is four for four from the free throw line tonight. And he has 17 points. Oh, there's a walk, a turnover. Mansfield did the jump stop, and he did that right. But he had too much momentum going and ended up sliding his foot and taking that extra step as he was looking for someone to pass it to. The Ridgeline gets the ball back, and now Wright runs into Caden Cox as Cox stopped on a dime. And Wright with his third foul. And Ridgeline's got it back up to 18 and looking to make it 20 with 2.29 to play in the third quarter. They go down low to Knowles. They try to bring the help from the backside. Knowles catches it anyway and turns and scores. 24 for Knowles. And he's there to make McClellan think twice about what looked like an easy layup. McClellan misses, and Ridgeline gets the rebound. Hall changing it into another gear, leaves it off for Booth, and Booth says, yeah, and drops it out of bounds. Booth was going in for the rebound. He, I'm sure he wasn't looking for the pass, and then Hall was right on top of him when he threw it to him over his head, and Booth just couldn't handle it. Here's another near turnover. It is. It's an over and back. It's McClellan. Can't handle it. Fifty-five, thirty-five, twenty-point Ridgeline lead. Cox, long three, off the front of the iron. Booth fights for the rebound. Comes up with it. Smith. Back to Booth. Will Booth shot rims out and tried to reward Booth for the fight on the rebound and 
Shot just rims out of there. Here's Anderson. Anderson kicks to the corner to right. He doesn't take the three. Pass was a little low. Had to gather himself. Right will earn it the hard way. Smith picks up the foul. That's his first. Hall will sit and Adams will replace him for Ridgeline. So right now with 10 points. And at the line to try to grab one more. Free throw too hard and rebounded by Adams. 18 point Ridgeline lead, 120 to play in the third quarter. Both teams with three fouls each. No real foul trouble to speak of. Cox looking at a three, likes what he sees. Caden Cox now with 20. 44 of Ridgeline's 58 points by Cox and Knowles. Oh, Adams moving his feet to stay in front. And he ends up fouling right. Adams did a good job to stay in front of right. And they say he got him on the arm. So Adams with his second foul. And Wright goes to the line for two. Two for Adams, two for Cox, two for Knowles. Wright's free throw is good. Got an unorthodox release. Wright's got three fouls, two for Anderson and two for Mansfield for Uinta. So watch his release here. That one was smoother than the other one. He kind of a... A little bit of a hitch as he goes, but he hits two in a row. Doesn't matter what it looks like if it's going through the hoop. A 19 point lead for Ridgeline, and Uinta calls a timeout. This has been a long third quarter, 58 39. Ridgeline with the lead, Caden Cox with 20. Peyton Knowles with 24. I talked to Coach Day before the game this week, and I was talking about the playoffs and how it works. You know, you're going down next week if you win tonight, and you got three games basically in three nights. And he's, he was telling me, well, if we if we win tonight, then we're going to practice tomorrow because they turn around and play Monday. They've been scouting ahead possible matchups and. He said, you know, we take a lot of pride in what we've done the last three months. They lift two times a week, and they've done it all year long to build strength. They've been very really measured in sleep and nutrition between games, trying to make sure these kids are taking care of themselves. He says, if we're fortunate enough to keep going, to keep playing, then we as a coaching staff are going to make sure that we're going to help them get the sleep, eat the right stuff. You know, they're not pounding burgers after every game, which is good. That leaves more burgers for me. He didn't say that, I said that, about the burgers. But they really have taken a lot of pride in the strength program they've got here at Ridgeline. Adams has it knocked away. The turnover, the Utes give it to Spears. Spears shut off, good defense by Booth. 30 seconds to play in this third quarter. Anderson working on Smith. Shovels it back to Taylor. Taylor across to McClellan. Now Spears. Eight seconds. Spears as Knowles comes out on him. Christofferson. Spears is going to have to fire from long range, and it's short. Good defense there by Ridgeline to keep him from getting a good look, and it's 58 to 39. As we head for the final eight minutes of the season for one team, the other goes on to the quarterfinals. You're watching the game of the week. Valley Channel. So, you bought your computer from one of those big box stores, or online, and now it's really slow, or just not working right. Targets acquired. PCs Unlimited can fix it. 
Fixing computers is what we do, and we've been doing it for over 20 years. Service, repair, diagnostics, networking, upgrades, system and data recovery, all your computer needs. Our prices are low, and our customer service is the best. You won't get help from the big box or online. Come see the professionals at PCs Unlimited. It's time for Wendy's Bacon Fetch. Bacon. That's right. The place that brought you the Baconator and sells more bacon cheeseburgers than anyone is making all your Applewood smoke dreams come true. Like the all-new Bacon Jalapeno Cheeseburger. Or the Bacon Double Stack in the $5 Biggie Bag. If you're this crazy for bacon, make mine a double. We got you with the Bacon Jalapeno Cheeseburger or the Bacon Double Stack Biggie Bag. Get yours now at Wendy's Bacon Fest. Over the period of time, my hearing became worse and worse. Over the course of the years, I developed a, a hearing loss, and I would not be able to hear my employees talk to me sometimes. For Paul Dings and Cash Valley's integrity, his character, his background, his equipment, I would recommend him to anyone for a hearing aid specialist. Back at Ridgeline, back at Ridgeline High School, 58-39. Our score here, Ridgeline leads. Uinta, the winner goes on to play the play the winner of the Dixie Bear River game. Dixie, I believe the number two seed, yeah, the number two seed overall. Chase, Chase Hall with six, Caden Cox with 20, 24 for Knowles, six for Jackman, two for Smith to lead. Ridgeline. Ball's free, Uinn has got it. Down low, Adams with the block, but they say he got they say he got body or arm, and Adams doesn't like the call. And they say with, with body and Adams with his third. So Taylor will go to the free throw line. He makes the first free throw. Taylor makes one of two. He just about rebounded his own miss. He knew when it came out. Didn't feel right, huh? It's an 18-point lead for Ridgeline. You end up picking up the pressure. Cox inside, up and in. Basket good. Caden Cox coming to the basket. Caden Cox Caden now with 22. Going to the line, shooting one. Knowles with 24, he had 20 in the first half. And in the second half, it's been Cox. Cox now has 11 in this second half. A foul out front. They're gonna call it on Booth. His second. Sixty-one forty. Ridge line is the up by twenty. Chant starts from the ridge line. Student section. Anderson's fouled on the three-pointer. Adams just picked up his fourth. Anderson will shoot three. Anderson with four three-pointers on the night. He's got 14 points, now 15. Checking in for Richline. Hall will replace Adams. He has to sit with four fouls. And Anderson makes all three. He's got 17 to lead you into. 
Wright with 12. Cox goes down court to Knowles. He has it knocked away, gets it back, and then he's fouled. They're going to say before the shot. They're going to call it on McClellan. It's his first. Five team fouls on Uinta, seven on Ridgeline. They've scored almost every time on the inbounds play underneath, and now they're going to get a free throw. Two of them. And McClellan picks up another foul. Penny Knowles shooting for Ridgeline. So Knowles at the line with 24 points. Now 25. Makes them both. Perfect in the line. Peyton. He's six of eight from the free throw line tonight. He's got 26 points. McClellan, wide open three, drains it. No, it's short. Hall races in, left side, lay it up and in. McClellan's shot looked like he'd snapped the net, but it just hit below just the rim. Just below the rim. And here's a turnover. Knowles has it. Corner. Cox. Three. Skips off the iron and into the hands of Taylor. McClellan can't handle it. Another turnover for Uena. Smith. Knowles. Miss. Rebound. Put it back. 28 for Peyton Knowles. This one's free, but Uena gets it back. McClellan leans in and misses as Booth recovered and came over to challenge. We're under six minutes to play in the ball game. It's a 24-point lead for Ridgeline. Hall to Knowles. One thing he hasn't done tonight is shoot the three. And he can shoot the three. He was the second leading three-point shooter by percentage earlier in the season for this team. Christofferson off the miss to Anderson. Skip pass, and it's taken away by Knowles. He done everything tonight. Go on, get me some popcorn, five. It's the only thing he hasn't done. Cox, long three, bang! Chase Cox with 26, steal by Knowles. And then he's walloped by Christofferson. They've had enough of him. And then Christofferson comes back, pats him on the back, but son, you probably best just ever step away from five. And that's going to be an intentional foul. Two. Some frustration there by Christofferson. And Knowles will go to the free throw line. He's been unstoppable tonight. This one's for 30. Short. His arms are getting tired from all the shooting. And most of his shots have been in, been in close. And he's got a look on his face like that didn't make him very happy. And they're going to put Christofferson on the bench. Cool him down a little bit as you into. Knowles was going to try to step in there and dunk it again. Ridgeline looking for a 30-point lead. Knowles, he's going to take it in and lay it in. He's got 31. And Ridgeline leads by 30. See when Coach Day maybe starts going to his bench. It's a 30-point game with four and a half to play in the ball game. Spears pushes off. 
been a tough night for Spears. His second foul. They haven't let him have the ball where he wants it. And then when he does get it, they've been paying an awful lot of attention to him. He's had a hard time getting shots. Cox goes in the corner to Booth. Booth shut off by the defense. Well, Ridgeline will start it over, leading by 30, 73-43. Hall with the bounce pass to Booth. And it goes through his hands and out of bounds. Ninth turnover for Ridgeline. Long pass down court and a charge on Briggs. That's 14 turnovers now for Uinna. Five in the fourth quarter as the wheels are coming off for the Utes. They trailed by 16 at the half. 18 at the quarter, and now it's a 30-point ball game with four minutes to play in the ball game. Three by Smith. Smith has five, and Coach Day is going to empty his bench. Timeout, Timeout Ridgeline. Coach Kyle Day is going to take his starters off the floor. 57 of Richline, 76 points. Accounted for by Caden Cox and Peyton Knowles. 31 for Knowles, 26 for Cox. Uena just had no answer for Knowles. And then as they started to try to maybe collapse on him and bring help, Cox found some openings and he was able to put a bunch of points up as well. Marshall Hansen, number 15, into the ball game. Riley Garver, number 10. Strat Simmons is 11. Noah White, 23. And Lucas Sorensen, 34, into the ball game for Ridgeline. Ewen is going to stay with Spears. Mansfield, Wright, Anderson, and Briggs. There's Spears working on Simmons. Spears goes to the rim. He's fouled. Spears with nine, averaging about 15 and a half a game. Going to the line for the second time tonight. He's now two for two from the free throw line. He's in double figures with 10. Anderson leads you in it with 17. Wright has 12. And Spears has 11. Those are the three that usually lead the Utes. Hansen working against Anderson. Gets it off to Garver, now White. They go high post to Sorensen. He turns and fires, misses. White climbs the ladder and taps that one out. White's 5'10", but that's high school basketball uh, High school basketball roster 5'10", which means he's about 5'8 and a half. Don't tell him I said that. He's put together pretty well, though. He might hurt me. He's been a heck of a running back for the ridge line on the football field. That's white. 76-45, ridge line. And the foul by Garbert. Spears will go to the line. 246 to play in the ball game. Spears just made two free throws. And he's got two more. 
Luke Sorensen. That's one and one. It was before the shot. He makes the first. Spears is now four for four from the free throw line with one more coming. He's got a dozen. He's just a junior. So he'll be back next year for you, Inta. Anderson, Wright, Mansfield, and Briggs, all seniors for you, Inta. Sorensen down low to Hanson. He turns in and scores. Hanson, the six-foot junior. Gets on the board, and Anderson now has 19 as he scores on the other end. 78-49, Richline running away with it with 2.15 to play in the ball game. Oh, Hanson passes up the three-pointer. Stead goes to the middle. Sorensen battles for the rebound, and it's you in a ball, ball. on the alternating possession. Christofferson's going to come back in the game. Number one checks in, Rick Christofferson. He's going to replace Wright. And the Ridgeline crowd's going to let Christofferson know about it. And he had that hard foul on Knowles a little earlier. Under two minutes to play now as Anderson finds Briggs and Spears with the ball again. Long three by Anderson. This one a little short. Mansfield fouled on the rebound. He puts it up and in, and they say no before the shot. And they call the foul on Riley Garver. Garver to junior. Mansfield goes to the line. Mansfield with his first point of the game. And Coach Johnson will empty his bench as well. Joshua Shirtliff into the ball game. Caden Sheffield. It's Mansfield hits them both. Donovan Moon at the scorer's table getting set to check in. Hanson kicks it back out to Garver. Now Simmons. Garver, three, won't go. Rebounded by Mansfield. He's going to bring it across on his own, and White closes the gate. McClellan looking. Christofferson comes to get it. Now he gives off to Mansfield. Ewan and moving the ball. Sheffield. Looked like he turned it over, and what do we got? We call it on Hanson. And Sheffield will go to the free throw line. Sheffield scores, and Moon replaces Mansfield. Sheffield makes them both, 78-54, or 78-54, with one minute to play in the ball game. Ridgeline will play the Dixie Bear River winner. Haven't seen a score in that one yet. Three won't go for Garver. Rebounded by Sheffield as we're under a minute now. Ball attempt is blocked. Sorensen, a little bit of distress there, and finally turns and able to get it back to White. And Coach Day says, hey, don't shoot it. The Ridgeline will just dribble out the final 15 seconds of this ball game, and they'll move on to the quarterfinals. This is a team to watch. 
Ridgeline. We know Region 9 is full of some good basketball teams. And Ridgeline will probably be playing one of them next week against Dixie. But this is a good team. It's a complete team. And they win 78-53 behind 31 points from Peyton Knowles. And that'll do it for us for the season as well. Thanks for joining us all season long. We'll see you next year on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, of mind. Rich's Cars and Credit, good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Half Valley's TV station for over 30 years.